Welcome, I'm Becca Peters. I'm a mindfulness, compassion, and meditation facilitator, and I'm here today to share some ideas and thoughts and practices around the importance of compassion and empathy. Today I'd like to talk about self-compassion and empathy. Compassion is the desire for another person's suffering to be alleviated, and it's followed by a deep desire to take action, to want to help alleviate their suffering. Self-compassion is the desire to want our own suffering to be alleviated. And empathy, that's putting ourselves in someone else's shoes. So why is it important to cultivate self-compassion and empathy for others and compassion for others? Because it strengthens our well of connection. And overall, in response to feeling more connected and less alone, our well-being is strengthened. Self-compassion is important because it helps us to have better regulation of our own emotions. We begin to value ourselves in a way where we check in and say, how am I doing? Remembering self-compassion is a desire for ourselves to want to be free from suffering, which means we develop and cultivate a very loving and kind relationship with ourselves. And in turn, as we deepen this well of compassion for ourselves, we feel connected and more available to relationships that are deepened with others. And in fact, self-compassion and empathy are the antidote to loneliness. So where do we begin? We begin with ourselves. And I'd like to lead you through a self-compassion break right now. So begin by taking your seat either on a cushion or chair, allowing your eyes to gently close or rest open with a gentle, soft gaze at the floor in front of you. Allowing your shoulder blades to rest down your back. Feeling your sits bones connect with the chair beneath you or the cushion. And taking three deep cleansing breaths. Remembering that the inhalation is nourishing every cell in your body. And that there's the possibility with every exhale that we let go and surrender and relax into this moment even more. So I'm going to ask you to bring to mind a situation that you're working with that is causing some degree of stress in your life. And many of us have light stressors to heavy stressors, and I'm going to suggest that you choose something that maybe on a scale of one to 10 is roughly a four. It's not too overwhelming, but it's enough that you can feel a little bit of irritation or distress in your body when you bring it to mind. So taking a few moments, choosing something that you'd like to work with in this meditation, it's causing some degree of discomfort in your life. And I'd like you to now bring mindfulness. This is the first step of the self-compassion break. Bring mindfulness to this experience by labeling or identifying the motion or the discomfort that you're feeling. For example, you might say, oh, I'm feeling loneliness or stress. And then we notice where we're feeling the discomfort in the body. Perhaps it's the chest or the belly. Or maybe you feel the discomfort all throughout your body. By bringing mindfulness, remembering that mindfulness is a non-judgmental approach. Noticing where you feel it in your body. And the second step of the self-compassion break is common humanity. Reminding ourselves this is what it means to be human. We often feel alone with our challenges. And when we remember this is actually what connects us as a human race, that all over the planet, people are feeling the very same way you're feeling right now. 
remembering that we're not alone in our challenges or suffering or stress allows us to feel more connected to others. And the third step of the self-compassion break is kindness. So turning within and asking yourself, what is it that I need right now to feel validated, soothed, nurtured, supported? Sometimes it can just be recognizing that we're struggling, that can be enough to feel our body calm down a little bit. We often say in self-compassion practice, name it to tame it. So once we identify and name the difficult feeling we're having, our physiological response follows suit and it calms down. For some of us, having a phrase or a word whispered into our ear, that would be soothing. And if you're struggling to know, what would I say to myself or what do I need? Many of us don't know. You can imagine that you're sitting with a dear friend who's going through the very same experience you're going through. What words of encouragement or gesture would you offer to your dear friend? What words of kindness? Maybe it's something like, I'm sorry you're suffering. I'm sorry you're stressed. I'm right here with you. So I'll sit in silence for a few moments with you as you gently and lovingly repeat any word or phrases, or perhaps it's a gentle touch. Keeping your eyes closed. Taking a moment to notice what you're feeling in your body, in your heart, in your mind. Sometimes this can be tender. So we practice self-compassion to be kinder to ourselves and to deepen that well so that we can access greater compassion and kindness in our relationships so that we feel more connected and less alone, making room for greater joy in our day-to-day -day life. Now that we know that self-compassion and empathy are antidotes to loneliness, I'd also like to remind us that self-compassion is a practice that we can utilize in every moment of every day. So many of us spend our lives trying to avoid difficult sensation, trying to avoid stress. And it takes up a lot of our time, this avoidance. Self-compassion provides the necessary steps and tools for us so that we learn how to be with the challenges in our lives so we're not so distracted and preoccupied with them, which gives us more opportunity and time for joy, for play, for relationships, creativity, and love. So I hope that you'll join me in practicing the self-compassion break every single day, no matter what's going on in your life, and as a reminder that no matter what is happening, you too are deserving of ease and joy and deep peace.